Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been quite a while and I feel like that's always my first line every time I come back on YouTube. Um, but in May, I come with a purpose. Um, I have obviously, as we might all be, in holiday mode and relaxing, reflecting and spending some time with family. Um, yesterday as I did my devotions, this is what the Lord has impressed to know in my heart to be like, most of us are, yes, looking forward to 2023 and we've listened to prophecies about 2023 and um, some of us might be geared up because we already foresee um, what is to come. Um, but, you know, the Lord also impressed in my heart that some of us are maybe waiting for the year to start before we can prepare or understand the season um, that 2023 is going to bring in each of our personal lives. Now, one thing that we must understand as children of God is that there is a corporate word um, that is prophetic, that can come through prophetic voices, or there, then there is a, a personal word that God can give you that is personal and particular to your life. And, you know, God definitely desires that each and every one of us have a clear perspective and sort of understanding of um, the season that he wants to bring us into because the Lord definitely believes in preparation. God believes in preparation and the example that I can give all of us is that Jesus was still God um, on earth you know when he was a child but he could not fulfill the assignment without going through the process and preparation um, to actually fulfill what he had come on this earth to do. Same thing with David. David had to go through um, serving Saul, who actually hated and wanted to kill him before he could be king, um, because that's just process. God believes in process and preparation. And so it is vital and important um, as children of God to actually understand what God wants you to particularly prepare for um, as you enter into a new year. And so um, just relying on a corporate word can be dangerous because even though this corporate word can be 100% applicable to you as a person, you need a rhema, right? Which is a specific word um, through the word of God that will actually help you to be, to know your course for 2023. So as I was praying yesterday, uh, what was uh, impressed to me was some of us are actually only going to start preparing when January comes. Then you start saying, oh, um, you know, Lord, this is what I want to happen, you know, when we do our prayer and um, when we break into the new year. But the Lord is saying there's a few days um, left of this year and those few days you can literally take some time away to connect with him and um, hear uh, particularly what he wants you to prepare for, hear particularly what he wants you um, to pray for, pray against, prepare your heart to go through. Um, you know, I definitely believe that when Abraham, um, when God told him that he's going to be the father of many nations, if God had not shown him, um, you know, the vastness of this promise that, you know, um, through showing him the sand and saying like, literally, it's going to be an uncountable blessing that I'm going to give you, he would not have much to hold on to. And so some of us need to understand that your 2023 is going to unfold in a particular way. And so for you to be able to go through um, 2023 and finally hold whatever God has promised for you in 2023, um, you need to have the vision for 2023 and you need to understand what, what God needs to prepare you for. The word of God says that um, where there is no vision, people perish. Some translations say where there is no vision, people cast off restraint. And I want to talk about the portion of casting off restraint um, is that it's almost like where there's no vision, we all go ballistic because you touch this, you touch that, you don't know where um, to focus on, you don't know where to stress your prayers on. And, you know, I want to say something. One thing I've realized about the Lord, he doesn't mind if your prayers are directed to a one particular thing for a period of time. This is what I've realized. And um, so when you understand the season and the Holy Spirit impresses that you must pray particularly more for a particular thing in 2023, as you prepare to go into 2023, then, you know, you won't feel like, ah, Lord, I've been praying like about this particular thing. Um, you know, when is it going to come to pass? Because you're going to understand that you are going through um, building the spiritual 
capacity or rather uh, breaking down the level of uh, maybe um, strongholds or spiritual entities to get that promise um, to you, which definitely happens. And so I'm really um, looking forward to tell you guys about these things that um, I believe the Lord impressed. Um, and so the title of this message is How to Hear God Clearly About Your 2023 in 2022 now today the date is the 28th i'm going to post this today um and we literally have like three or so days um to hear from the lord and you know here's one thing about god you can use these three days to find time to hear him right and you might not hear him instantly in 2022 but depending on the level of your discernment all right but i bet you in 2023 you're going to hear him in the beginning of 2023 or in the process of you're going to hear um, what he's directing you to in 2023 because of the prayer you made in 2022. God is a God of preparation. God loves for us to realize because he's gone before us, we need to connect with him so that he can tell us what is to come so that we can prepare, so that we can understand um, that we will be forewarned, forearmed because um there is nothing that the enemy can attack you on um, or sort of cripple you um, not to be able to do if you knew it was supposed to come. You will know that God is has empowered you. But if you go into a terrain unprepared, you know, ill-prepared, then the enemy has a, he has a one hand up, all right? And so this is what the three things I can tell you guys that can help you to hear God clearly in these few days of 2023, of 2022, about your particular 2022. Remember, I'm not speaking about a corporate word. I'm speaking about a personal rhema word, okay? Now, most of us have goals, um, and maybe most of us, um, by the grace of God, you know the vision for your life. So you know what you're overall meant to accomplish in this world. You understand your purpose. And so most of us have set goals. Lord, I want to make this much um, the, um, next year. I want to be influential in these areas. Lord, I want to do this next year that I wasn't able to do last year, which is perfectly good because the Lord does want us to have a plan. Uh, one thing that some children of God do is just say, Lord, you tell me what to do. I'm just going to stand here um, and wait for you. No, 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 no. There are thoughts that God plants in your mind. Um, there are ideas that God releases to you. There are promptings that come to your spirit. And if those are not there, then you can start from scratch and ask God, Lord, what's my vision? What's my purpose? But if you're at a place where you already understand these things and you have a good concept of what they are, then the first thing I would like um, to tell you, um, um, or advice rather, to, 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 to advise you to do as you um, hear God clearly about 2023 is to clear your head um, and to silence the voices. You must clear your head. I know that in December, one thing that I strive to do all the time at the end of the year is to go away and find a quiet time where there's nobody. And yes, some of us might not afford to do that, um, or some of us might not have an opportunity to do that, like go and stay at a family member's house who's gone on holiday. You might not have the time to do that. But the Lord allows certain situations in our life so that we can actually ask him for the wisdom to apply his um, mindset in every area or everything that we go through. And so maybe you live with a lot of people, you don't have time to... I'm sure there's a park around your house. Um, you know, there's a place that you can walk to to just silence the voices, silence the mind, right? Strive to do this. Strive to do this. Strive to look for quiet time and silence the voices, okay? And when I say silence the voices, that could be the voices of worry, the voices of, oh my gosh, I need money for next year. Oh my gosh, um, I need to take my child to school. I don't have money. Oh my gosh, I need to move houses and I need money. Oh my God, oh my God. You need to silence the voices. Remember, God does not speak in chaos. Um, he probably does speak, but you're not going to be able to hear him because if around you physically there's so much noise, um, because we are spirit beings living in a body, your flesh will not allow your spirit to hear above that. Um, and so you need to then quiet what's happening in the physical so that your spirit man can be more clearer. And so my advice to you is find a place. Find a place to go 
if this is short notice obviously because there's three days or so away from the end of the year um you know go to a park um you can go to a park two hours in a day um take a walk um you know take a walk don't take headphones um or if you do take headphones listen to white noise um and try and quieten your 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 mind quieten your worries and your desires and and literally just connect with your father intimacy with god brings direction that's one thing that i can tell you i looked at the life of david and i looked at the life of saul and i realized that it was um the readiness for intimacy vulnerability and humility from david that made him the kind of king that he was because both parties were they made mistakes um but it was david's willingness and all the all a lot of other stuff you know that um sort of helped him to walk the kind of journey that he did um with the lord and so it's the same with us you guys if you are vulnerable with god you make time for him god honors honor god rewards honor god rewards setting time aside to hear from him god honors the things we do and he rewards them that we do for him in seeking him so look for quiet time and in this quiet time connect with him connect with the holy spirit when i speak of connection i'm speaking of intimacy i'm not speaking of uh, you just listening to sermons or you know no i'm speaking of you reading the scriptures meditating on his love for you meditating on who he is you know before you start asking um too many questions just connect um on the foundation of him being your father your lord and your savior all right um that is part of clearing your head as a child of god okay and silencing all the other voices and awakening your spirit and then the second thing is um uh don't um no okay and the second thing right in hearing god clearly in 2022 about your 2023 um is literally increasing the level of your discernment increasing the level of your discernment is very important most of us struggle with discernment because we cannot quiet in our mind and so because you're going to be silencing your mind and silencing your voices and finding quiet time you'll find that you can become more sensitive to god because you're growing and coming back um you know to a time of either worship or or meditation or like reading the word as i said with number 1 so this number 2 is increasing the level of your discernment ask god the questions um you know once you feel that you have connected with him and you can feel his presence and i know sometimes feeling is not necessarily a good way to weigh things but when i say feel i'm, I'm saying no when you know that his presence is there sometimes we are in a place in our lives where we don't even know if the presence is there but we can build that up because we're spirit beings and the spirit has it doesn't have feeling but it has knowing of a tangible reality and so once you have that tangible reality then begin to ask god questions you know ask him and um and, and when you ask him you're obviously going to bring forward what he said to you before and so take what you have worked on in the previous year and say lord this is what i was i accomplished this is what i couldn't accomplish this is what you said to me last year this is what happened this is what didn't happen what season am i in in 2023 lord how you know what what would you like me to accomplish added on to you know what you've instructed me last year should i continue with some of the things i couldn't accomplish last year or do you want to give me uh, new things that you want me new instructions that you want me to do within my vision within my purpose lord are these goals enough one of the things that sometimes we do as children of god is we set goals that are achievable with our own might remember as a child of god yes god wants us to have wisdom to use our minds and you know to understand um but god also wants us to set goals that are going to need faith which comes to the third thing you have to grow your faith to hear god clearly about 2023 and what do i mean about this remember um in the word of god it says faith pleases god right guys i'm sitting on this chair and it's so tiny and it's like i'm losing blood circulation um and so god um says um that faith pleases him you know above everything else god wants you to come necessarily believing that you're going to receive from him so after you've cleared your mind and connected um and uh, and 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 built intimacy again with god then second of all 
then you bring your petitions to the Lord. You ask him, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Lord, is, uh, you know, am I in the right will? This is what you said last year. Converse with the Lord. Commune with him. And then the third thing is to build your faith. Let me tell you why building your faith is one of the most important things to go through any season or any year in your life. is because, and um, I'll leave a description um, on a lot of faith teachers in the word of God. And I think most of the time people have had a misconception and called them prosperity pastors. By the way, God desires prosperity in our lives. Any gospel that teaches that you shouldn't be prosperous and not necessarily seeking prosperity above seeking God. I'm not saying that, but any prosperity, any gospel that says you shouldn't desire that God should make you successful or prosperous is not is not the right doctrine, right? And I say that with boldness. Um, and so um, what am I saying? I forgot. I lost my train of thought. Yes. For us to receive anything from the Lord. Remember, once you have um, understood what God wants you to do, because God is going to speak to you. So you must have time where you are speaking to God. And then you must have time where you are actually listening to God and and listening in to hear what he is saying to you. Because now you've grown your sensitivity. So you must listen to your spirit. And God will begin to direct you. Or say, listen to this man of God. Or read this in the Bible. So that you can... Um, you know, come to being directed into what he wants you to see, perceive and understand, okay, then from there, even after you have received an instruction from the Lord, you guys, you need faith to implement, let me say, you need faith to implement, I'll make an example, the Lord has so many times given me projects to do where I didn't have money, like I was broke, uh, and in the natural, you could say like, oh, this is crazy. How is she planning on something and she doesn't even have money for it? But how God works is that he does, when God gives you an instruction, he's not thinking about your pocket. He's thinking about the measure of your faith. And the word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And also in Hebrews, it says faith is a substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things that are not real. And so when you build that evidence, it comes with speaking God's word, reading God's word, creating an atmosphere where you can believe God for anything. In that way, whatever he shows you about 2023, whether he says, Busi, for the first four or five months, you must pray and fast because I need to break something so something else can happen. Or Busi, I need you to praise in the beginning of the year more than you do A, B, C, D so that something else can come. Or whether the Lord is saying, next year, I'm going to give you financial breakthrough in a way that all of that is needs to be translated from the spirit realm into the physical through faith. And faith is simple. It is the God kind of faith we need and we need to ask God for so that we can live in the God kind of provision. Because most of us saints just actually live within our own means. And listen to me, I'm not saying anybody must be stupid here. You live within your own means as in you don't overspend and all those things, but you believe God for his capacity. And then you adhere to his instructions for him so for you, rather, to access those promises that seem impossible in the natural. And so I hope you guys um, have learned something from this video. And I hope that you will have an amazing 2023. I'm really praying and asking the Lord to give me a prophetic word for 2023, um, a corporate word. And I have not necessarily received one yet. Um, but I'm so excited uh, for 2023 and what the Lord has in store for you guys. Um, just take time away. There's still time. These three days are a lot. You don't even have to spend too much time with the Lord because God knows um, the capacity that each and every one of us have. Give him an hour a day, two hours. You know, if you're used to giving him an, uh, a two, an hour a day because you got work and all these things, now you're on holiday. Give him three hours, you know. Give him give him something. Give him the, the whole of these three days. Tell yourself you're going to give God a little bit more time so that you can hear about the coming year. You guys, stay blessed and remember to like, share and subscribe. And bye.